Hello, my name is Christian Dazen. I will give a uh, presentation about uh, Relax and Recover automated testing. So, who am I? Um, I'm one of the main contributors of uh, Relax and Recover, and it's the first time in my life that I almost nothing had to say about Relax and Recover. <laughs> I had other people who were, who were doing that for me, which is uh, very nice. So, in this talk, uh, so for those who are not aware what Relax and Recover is, uh, it's a uh, bare metal disaster recovery tool written in Bash, and it's open source, of course. It's perfectly integratable with other backup tools, open source and commercial ones, and uh, it's able to cloning, cloning to different kind of uh, methodologies like V2V, P2V, and so on. And it can work with very complex systems and very large enterprise systems. So it's very scalable as well. Uh, it is being used in uh, very um, big companies. Uh, one of the companies where I do consultancy uh, almost daily, they have, I think, more than 10,000 Linux systems using Rear. Um, and the nice thing is the disaster recovery, Im disaster recovery image is very flexible as well in the sense that it can boot from the network, can boot from the ISO, can boot from USB, um, and even from the RAM. Well, that's more for testing, but okay, it's away. So that was the introduction of Rear, and that's it, in fact, for me. What I want to concentrate in this talk is testing, because Rear is now 10 years, more than 10 years old, and testing was always a pain, because it's so heterogeneous, it can run on, let's say, Linux distributions like Debian, Ubuntu, Red Cat, SUSE, and so on and so on. It can also run on different hardwares. Uh, you have ProLines, you have Dells, and, and everything has different tweaks, and that makes testing very difficult. Above all, because it integrates so fluently with different backup methodol methodologies, testing all of these things is incredibly difficult. Furthermore, as I said, we can boot from different met methods. Also that gives an extra um, layer of testing that should be done. And every time that we make a new release, that's a problem because it's impossible to test everything. And it will never be possible to test everything. That's why we have a very good user community. And when we bring out something and it breaks, uh, then we know it very quickly. So. The bottom line is, testing is and will always stay a pain. But we try to, uh, to overcome uh, first levels, let's way of speaking, and get some automated testing done. So it's always finding the right balance uh, between continuous integration, continuous development, and continuous testing. Um, we already have, for many, many years, uh, thanks to uh, SUSE, and the open uh, build services that daily affect when rear snapshots are uh, changed, when, when we uh, merge something into HitCap, automatically the, the nightly builds are made and the new RPMs are available. It's already there for many years. So that was the first step. What we do now is every time that there is a new build, we can automatically test it. Um, of course, we may not forget our contributors. Um, most of the contributors are here, uh, the active contributors. We have many, many contributors over the last 10 years, but like in many uh, open source projects, they do something and after a while they are gone because they have other kinds of interest. It is fine. And important to know is, uh, GitHub is our uh, friend, our master code is there, even though our uh, website is over there, uh, issues are there, and also the, the free support is on there, and the HIP issues. And we also have commercial support if required. For big companies, that's something useful. Okay, why did we uh, start with automated testing? Because 
We have customers who have a support contract, the demand quality test. So that was the first step that we did, is to introduce uh, this automated testing to have at least an uh, improved level of uh, contribution, an improved level of, uh, of um, stability in our software, that's that it didn't break, or if it breaks, that we know it in fact immediately that it will break. So what will the automatic testing effect do? It will create a disaster recovery image, it will create a backup, it will boot and recover virtual machine over Pixie network booting, it will recover it automatically, and it will restart. And after the restart, your recover virtual machine is exactly the same as the client. You will see it in the next uh, slide. This is a test configuration. So what do we see here? We have the client, we have the server, and the recover VM. This is all done via Vagrant. And you have the hypervisor on the top. We have uh, two networks, a DHCP network and a private network. We will be using a private network. Um, we use Vagrant. Uh, we need a Linux host system uh, because uh, we should could be using a Mac or a, or a Windows. But I, I'm for the moment, I just say Linux. And we need Vagrant. And we need as a hypervisor, you can use uh, Oracle VirtualBox or Libvirt. This system is uh, using Libvirt. I have my second PC with me with uh, VirtualBox and it works equally well. So what we are we doing when we say starting the script? We will start up the two VMs, the client and the server. The server is in fact what it is saying. It will contain the backup. It will contain also the Pixie boot environment. And the client will just start up, install rear, the latest version of course, start the backup, the backup goes to the server, and it is done, it will automatically shut down the client, start up the recovery VM, and that starts in fact the recover. It picks the boots from the server and recover the uh, rear completely automatically. When the recovery is completed, it will shut down and reboot and then it will be able to start up by itself. At least that is the purpose, of course. I already said this. Um, these are the requirements, what we need. Um, so, also the automated testing is in uh, simple scripting. It is also available on GitHub. You can see it here. It's on my personal name account. You can see it also on my back. Um, you just have to clone it and start the script. And uh, you can log in as Vagrant, you can log in as root with the password Vagrant. And that's it. Like I said, you can uh, log in different ways uh, to the um, VMs. You can uh, use um, VLC <coughs> Viewer, you can use the uh, Oracle VirtualBox or the Libvirt uh, Virtual Manager. UE, where you can just use secure shell or use the vagrant uh, commands if it is required. This is with the VNC viewer. Um, I normally use the VNC viewer with Libvirt. With uh, VirtualBox, I use normally the UE that is delivered by Oracle VirtualBox. Okay, enough talk. Let's do the demo. So <coughs> here you can see the script. It's a simple script effect. It's a sequential script. Um, it has some commands because uh, it is a purpose to, uh, to test the distribution. The only distribution for the moment implemented is CentOS 7 because that was required by the customer. And we can have boot methods. The default boot method is Pixie booting. And the other one that will be supported uh, very soon is ISO. Uh, it is support because I also have a workshop uh, using ISO. So <laughs> it's just a matter of time to uh, implement it over here. It's already half implemented, but not complete. Um, the boot server can be changed. By default, is the server VM. 
but if you have another requirement, you can uh, overrule it. Uh, the same with the provider. Um, but I will start the, the script and you can talk uh, afterwards, well, uh, during the script. Because this is libvirt, the minus p is the provider, the default is virtual box, because this is libvirt, I have to say minus p libvirt, and that's it. The rest I, I can keep uh, as default. So start it. What is the script doing now? You can see it on the bottom. It will start up the, the two VMs, the client VM and the server VM. So this is pure vagrant work now. Vagrant is starting up the two VMs. I could have cheated and already started them in, on, on front, but it is normally quick enough to, uh, to do a job. So once the, the two clients are up and running, you will be seeing, hopefully soon. All right, they are provisioned. I don't care to have an update for the moment, so we wait for five seconds because you can interrupt. Now you have the status. You have seen the two client and server VM are running. We do a test if the network is okay. Yes, we can uh, communicate with the client and the server VM. And now, what the client VM, inside the client VM, we will pull the latest rear snapshot image from the open SUSE build services. That is what you're seeing now. You see? Hopefully it will be working because I haven't tested this. It is a new one. <laughs> <laughs> so this is live, uh, guys. I'm not cheating, it's not a video, eh? this is live, eh? so it can fail. <laughs> All right, what you see here, over there, that is the ETC rear local configuration. So what you see here, that using Pixie booting, backup is uh, using tar, and we are using the uh, backup URL, is going to the server, 15, to the TFP boot area, but under the TFP boot area there will be the, uh, the server area where to store the backups. And you can see here the Pixie recover mode is unattended, that means just continue. If you wonder why here for the kernel command line, I use net.ifnames equals zero, that's not required for libvirt, but that is required for uh, VirtualBox, otherwise it will be using def bias def names for its uh, network interfaces. And then it will break your uh, automated uh, recovery. Okay, it will now starting the live uh, ISO uh, Pixie boot image is made. It's already stored, you can see it here. And now it is busy with the uh, backup. That will take a, a minute or two, I hope. <coughs> that's not uh, updating itself very frequently, it's easy, but okay, uh, that's not uh, too serious. That takes longer. Backing up takes longer than recovery. Yes. But have you tested the same tool with other distribution? Like CentOS 6 should be mostly the same unless certain... Uh, I, have, I have no doubts that, that it will not work. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a matter of implementing it and uh, putting time in it to, uh, to test it out. And how, uh, how old is the automation? How old? Yeah, yeah, like oh, um, month or two? Yeah, so it's... Uh, it's quite new, it's quite new, yeah, yeah. Okay, finally, the client is halting. We will starting up the recover VM. It will try to pixie boot. It will, there are two interfaces, the uh, DHCP interface and there's the private network. It first tries the PHCP interface. That won't work, then it will try the second interface. This is libvirt, if you use a virtual box, you cannot pixie boot from the server VM. You must pixie boot from the host. That's the limitation of uh, virtual box, but okay. 
That's why I said we're using Linux. Okay, that's the menu. It's already starting the RAM image. System is almost up and running. I'll have the recover image. It's already formatted to the hard disks. And it's already restoring the data. Within, within a minute or so, it will be finished. What it will do then, it will trigger the server. Configuration, the Pixie boot configuration and says, okay, now you have to boot the next time from the default hard disk, not from the network, uh, not from the RAM image. Uh, it's already done with uh, restoring the data. It's uh, rebuilding its uh, initial RAM disk because it was a cloning. It's not exactly the same disk size. So it was a, a cloning. Eh? This was a V2V migration that we did. So it was not an exact copy. It was an other size of disk. Otherwise, we would never rebuild our initial RAM disk if it's not the same, if it was the same. That takes longer than uh, the recovery of the data. <laughs> okay. Okay, once this step is done, then uh, we are finished. Just installing the grip, bootloader, and yeah, then. That's, that's the step we were referring in the other talk that I was asking about the MBR, and he said yeah. that grab is installing. Mm -hmm. Okay. The 30 seconds, that's it's normal. If you want to interact and to, uh, to check something, uh, even that is tunable, huh? but okay. It's still fair, 30 seconds waiting. <laughs> is it easy to exclude some file system from the backup? Yes, that's all foreseen. Um, most of these uh, variables, you have to look in the slash user slash share slash rear slash conf default.conf file. All the used variables are defined over there with some description. And Johannes is very good in uh, making good descriptions. Long, long. Long descriptions <laughs> and good. Huh? Mine are mostly. Uh, some comments effect, <laughs> smaller comments, but uh, uh prefers longer comments and a, a longer text effect, and uh, I do agree that it is useful. So okay, system is uh, restarting, so the recover VM is now completely restored and rebooted, and we have our prompt. So the latest uh, rear snapshot was okay. <laughs> you should be able to log in. Password is vagrant. And if you do an IP minus A, the password should be 10, which was the client. So we are now exact copy of the client. And during the automated testing, do you do like any check on the recovered system, like checking if a file is there or whatever? Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, this is not, uh, I have not foreseen this in the talk. Let's see, yeah, wait. I will close this uh, QME. And this will stop. Um, if I do the help again, you will see there is a minus T from test directory. The test directory is this here. So these are the tests. They are not from me. They are coming from Red Hat. Red Hat is using these tests to validate the rear if they want to update something. And uh, that that use BeakerLib, and it already works. But I um, probably don't have time to uh, do something. Um, wait a second. I will stop. I will cheat a bit. I will halt the recover. I will start up the client again, because it's vagrant. Even if the recovery is now declined, it would still want to, to, to check the, uh, the vagrant uh, client uh, VM. So, sorry about that, but okay. Starting up this. Uh, 
Okay, then I go one back. I will use the, the smallest test, which is a very simple one. It's just the uh, check out the layout of your uh, system. It's something that has been modified. If you update the kernel or you uh, modify or increase your <coughs> one of your volumes, then uh, it's required that you rebuild the fact and do rear image. All right, so the test directory. So that's the check change disk layout. So um, rear automated, I have to use the libvirt. And the test, let's use this one. Oops, OK. That's a validation test. So now we can skip the uh, bringing up the vacant because they are already up and running. So that goes quicker. Voila. It copies, in fact, the, the complete test to the client, and it uh, already did <laughs> the test. So the first test is done, and what I do, I copy the test back to my host system here. So every time I run a test, I also have a copy of the, the logging. So that was a, a very quick demo of the tests that are possible. The other test will take much more time because it will al also make ISO images, check the ISO images, or even make them backup. But I don't have time for this uh, to demonstrate. This demonstrates what it, the possibilities are of these test scripts prepared by Red Hat. This is written in Bakerlib. But yesterday I learned something new with bags, and I will use that in the future also. Are these tests available? Like yes. These, these Everything is on GitHub. Even included it the tests? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. It's made available by Red Hat also. Okay. Are there any questions? Whatsoever? Was it clear enough? Yes. Awesome. It was a nice talk for me because I didn't have to say too much. <laughs> <laughs> System did it for me. A question? Yeah. We have an estimate about how much time you need to uh, uh, bring another uh, operating system. Like okay. The, yeah. The question was do I have an estimation how much time it will take to bring another uh, system uh, distribution effect into uh, the rear automated testing? If it's um, an RPM base, it's rather quick. If it's, for example, in Debian one, that will take a bit more time. But um, I think uh, pff, normally a few days. Yeah, a few days should be enough. Because the methodology is exactly the same as maybe in the other packages, and for the rest, it's exactly the same. Yeah. The framework is there, so it's only just a matter of uh, making the right uh, moves, in fact. Any other questions? No? Then I thank you very much for your time. And please enjoy the rest of the day here or outside. Thank you.